email presents a methodological problem in that sense, because while we know there's valuable insight in there, without the context to the collection, it can be really quite difficult to actually find the pieces that are of relevance to you, or you might come in with wrong assumptions about what you're able to find in an email archive. So for someone who goes to an email archive and tries to read it, you know, to understand the content, understand who was interacting, what was their relationship, what was the significance of what they were talking about, you need a pretty large degree of sort of contextual knowledge that you do not always get with email archives. Email is, for a start, um, a hybrid artifact in many ways. So yes, we can have an email in and of itself, um, uh, so email is, but at the same time, email are. Email exists as a collection of uh, networks, networked communication with nodes and ties, and, and actually making sense of those individual emails. Um, a, a lot of that comes from being able to understand the broader context. And therefore, when we deal with um, the information preserved in email, we're not just dealing with the content of emails, we're dealing with that context. Like this, you have different users with different user interests and different uses for these resources. And, and I think that presents um, uh, that presents a challenge that's, that's, that's to a certain extent general to, um, to these sorts of, of materials, but also has some specific considerations when we think about digital. This was uh, a, an email archive of a company that we cannot divulge the name and some of the content. So we have special permission to have the, the digital history available. And, and there are four short stories that deal with things like the strategy of the company, its issues around its burn rate and things like that. For us, this tool was really a sort of test version to find out around how email archives can deliver for researchers and other users who want to know about these kind of pieces of information, the content, the insight we can get from this type of correspondence. And our aim with it is really to accommodate diverse research questions. So we obviously came to resources for specific questions and assumptions, but the second part of the project is really to find out what questions are other people asking. Um, allow users to go iteratively through a collection to kind of replicate that research experience you may have in a physical archive, to allow quite a tacit and messy approach to research, you know, getting to know and then becoming more shrewd at what you're trying to find, because that is very much part of qualitative research, and uh, provide access for different levels of experience, so whether you know the resource uh, particularly well or not. Um, and the idea is really to offer a relatively complete access to a whole organizational email database, which at the moment, they're not that many available, but we believe in the future that will hopefully change. This is the tool. So if you go online to mcodis.com, this, this is the page you'll see, and you'll be able to, to choose the two different search modalities, mcodis plus and mcodis basic. So at the moment, this is still a trial version, so it's not quite finished. But Enron is an interesting archive because people know Enron for the big accountancy fraud. So they assume when they see the email archive, the emails will speak to that accountancy fraud. They do to an extent, but actually the emails are in the public domain due to um, a scandal in California around energy trading and were made um, available in connection with that particular lawsuit. So as a result, what you actually find in that email um, database is a lot of material relating to energy trading in California, which is not what people expect. So in many ways, the collection is slightly different in structure from what people would expect. So there's, there's a context around why this collection exists. Um, and it helps to understand that if you're actually looking for material, because it tells you why you can't find certain things, but you might, might find a lot of other things.